Hello and welcome. This is Learning in Public, creating a micro.blog theme as a path to personal enlightenment. My name is Mandaris, but you can call me Manny. First of all, who am I? I'm going to give you a brief history of who I am. I started creating sites in the 90s, but I wasn't one of those people who created the sites and then built a career out of it and have my own design firm. No, I am one of those people who peaked pretty much right around the time that they introduced frames to a website. I, like many others, had a website that had three pages and the under construction gift. So I, I pretty much just was really good at the basics and loved the feedback of saving to my little floppy drive and then getting back to business and seeing how my site came together. Back then I would use a lot of free resources that were available to me. Uh, there were many, many sites at, in the 90s that would help you build your own website. Unfortunately, these were pretty much limited to about 30 megs. So you would have a site that had three pictures and that was pretty much it. Or you had ad-based sites where you could put what you wanted on there, but you would have to have an ad and usually that ad would be something that would blink and try to sell you something like shirts or something. From there, I used the early, early social media websites such as Friendster and MySpace, which got to be really, really crazy. It was pretty much the style to see what you could do with a MySpace page. Why micro.blog? Micro.blog combines blogging with lightweight social media features. So you focus mostly on your writing and then you share that. It has very little friction when it comes to creating content. Not only do, do they allow for blogs, but there are new features being rolled out on a regular basis, such as podcasts, book collections, newsletters, and more. I like micro.blog because it allows for one place that I can put all my content so that it can start its journey to the rest of the internet. And of course, we live in a very, very busy world. I spent too much time having to track down dependencies on sites that I run because there was an update. Micro.blog will work out the dependencies so that it connects to all of your newer media that's out there and makes it easy and approachable. So if micro.blog is doing all this work for me and it has so much to offer, why do I take the time to make my own theme? Well, it's simple. It's pretty much my space. I like to have some kind of customization. I want to have more control over what people see when they come to see the origin of my content. So the mission for me was to create a new theme that fits how I want to see my website. By defining who I am, by designing the way I represent myself online. Now, in order to rein in what I can do with the website, I decided that I would have a couple rules. First of all, I wanted to make sure that I was kind to myself. I did not want to compare myself to what other people could do with their themes and designs. As they say, comparison is the thief of joy. I 
made sure that when I collect my resources to create my website that I would store those in a way that I could find it and after that I would document it. In this case I have notes and I also have my blog post on my website under the name of Labyrinth that combines everything that I've done for this particular theme. Thirdly, I review. Now this is very very difficult process for me, something I don't normally do, is reviewing my notes on how I build something. With the blog post, it allows me to look at what I've done so that when I go back to it, I can say, hey, how do I do this or make this better? How did I do this? Also, I wanted to welcome feedback. Micro.blog has a wonderful community of people who will respond to you and give you feedback. Some of it you will agree with, some of it you won't. But if you allow, if I allow myself to listen to their feedback, I can move my website forward, whether it is along the path that they have outlined or the continuation of what I'm doing. Also, I need to make sure that I'm only doing this if I'm having fun. This is supposed to be a fun project. So making sure that I do that will help me through. When I designed the website, I wanted to have three requirements to make sure that I didn't make this have a lot of feature creep. The first requirement is making sure that it's accessible. Secondly, I wanted to use semantic tags. Third, I wanted to use schema and open graph tags as well. And for all of these, I'll go into a little bit more detail. Accessible. I want to make sure that my site is experienced by as many people as possible. I don't want there to be a limit to who can see it, who can read it, who can experience it. There are different levels of accessibility and ability. This became very, very clear to me when I had a scare several years ago where I thought I was going to be blind in one of my eyes and the idea of having to navigate the world really, really scared me. And how was I going to pay my bills or find a new job or anything else that I need online? So this is very important to me that my site is accessible. I also wanted to focus on things that I could control in the browser. I wanted to make sure that different fonts and colors and every kind of assets that the site could use were fast and would not be limited by a CDN that I had no control over and I wanted to make sure that every font that was used is a OS level font that is found on all or most OS's. For the semantic tags I wanted to make sure that my nostalgia wasn't the only reason that I did this. When I look at other examples of Hugo themes, they have a lot of div tags. And I wanted to make sure that if someone was to read my site, they were would be able to navigate it in a reasonable manner and read the code itself. It was very, very popular back in the 90s and early 2000s to see a website do a open source and see how that website came together. Now, divs are a wonderful thing. And if you ever want to see what you could do with divs, check out some of the other Hugo themes, as well as the CSS Zen Garden, which takes us the same, uh, same example website 
and changes it such that it looks different. Also, I wanted to make sure that the code that I provide was clean and easy to read. When you look at the code for Labyrinth, you'll be able to see what code goes where and what is associated with the different levels of CSS. I wanted to use schema and open graph. This helps content move from one spot to another. In our case, it helps us with our post on micro.blog when they are shared to other services. Because as you know, sharing is caring. This allows other users to see what the link is before they click on it. And as an added bonus, it prevents rickrolling. For example, when I share from micro.blog to Mastodon, the IceCubes client will expand that link and give us the title of the post, my website title, and then it will give me information about the first couple lines in the post. In the application signal, it gives me the title, gives me the address, gives me what happened in the first line of the post, as well as the link, and it also gives me an image. Works in Apple Notes, and when we post it to Discord, it gives me information about the title, the website title, and then it gives me that first line of text in the post. Publication is our first iteration when we create our website. It's when we decide, hey, this is ready for the world. And of course, sometimes the first post can be very hard and very daunting. But when I did it, it was really positive. And I learned that it was okay for these themes to just be a work in progress. They don't have to be perfect right out of the gate. I got to see what my theme does to highlight what I'm doing in my blog. In my particular theme, I focus mostly on what I was going to write. When I started working on it more and after I published the theme, I noticed that I had a lot more pictures. And so I made adjustments later on on how to make the pictures stand out and pop also, what happens if it's a figure or if it's floating to the left or right? All those things became clear after I started really using the theme. Also, there was a huge relief. I got to just let go and say, hey, this is my site. And beyond belief, the world didn't explode. I was still the same person, and that felt good. Felt good to really accomplish something. Now, the fifth post work was really the hardest post I had related to creating this theme. The initial energy has started to wear off, and I was starting to starting to be a, a more of a, a drag on how to create this website, this theme. I would find small bugs and just kick myself like, oh, why did I not do this? Why is this not working? But I kept on with the tutorials section and I realized that my expectations were a little bit too high. I wanted perfection instead of progress. I also learned that deploying a post with mostly text and code on a Friday, you will not get a lot of feedback on what you should do in order to make the website better. 
it just is not the best day to ask people who do this day in, day out to make responses to something that is really, really text heavy. But how am I going to keep going? Am I still having fun? Yes. Yes, I am. It is still fun because I am constantly doing small things to improve the site, finding ways that I can improve it so that it's easier to read, easier to share, and learning about myself and how I can be less perfect and okay with that. So thank you very much for your time.